Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Divan and the topic of the lecture today is Vibrio cholera. In this topic, we're going to talk about how Vibrio cholera presents, what is its form, what kind of bacteria it is, how it gets to your body, how does it uh, multiply there, how does it colonize there, what kind of pathologies it causes, what sign and symptom you look for and what will be the outcome. So first of all, we'll talk about what Vibrio cholera is, what kind of bacteria it is, whether it's gram positive, whether it's gram negative, what form does it come in, whether it's rod shaped or comma shaped, does it have any flagellum. Next on, we're going to talk about the worldwide distribution. It was a survey which was carried between 2010 to 2012 and it told us that which countries are getting affected of Vibrio cholera more and which countries are not getting affected at all and what are those reasons. Next on, we're going to talk about what are the three modes of transmissions you get it from and after those mode of transmissions, how does the pathogenesis work? How does it get to your small intestine? And in the small intestine, what pathology does it causes which will lead to different kind of modalities, which will lead to hypochloridemia in, in your intestine, which will lead to more and more water coming from your blood into your intestine, which will lead to uh, your potassium, your bicarbonate following it. Then we'll talk about why it's so voluminous in size afterwards and we'll talk about what kind of pathology will it manifest and we'll talk about what pathologies will come out of the electrolyte imbalances and what pathologies will come out of water uh, depletion or dehydration. Next time we're going to talk about what clinical manifestations you look for. We'll talk about what will be the start of this pathology, how will it manifest in the start, then what will happen and then we're going to talk about what other symptoms uh, will be coming along if you don't treat it in time. And then we're going to talk about what uh, those electrical imbalances will bring to you if you don't treat them in time. Next on, we're going to talk about these parallel volume contractions in which we'll talk about the loss of volume in both vomiting and uh, uh, diarrhea. If it's less than 5%, what are the symptoms are going to be? If it's between 5 to 10%, what are the symptoms are going to be? And if it's more than 10% and it's severely dehydrated patient or it, in severe dehydration, what will be the uh, clinical manifestations of that patient. Next time we're going to talk about cholera gravis, how a patient presents to you in cholera gravis. Next time we're going to talk about the different uh, diagnostic modalities, different laboratory findings that you'll look for inside your complete blood picture of the patient, different kind of blood tests that you'll perform to get your definite diagnosis. Next time we're going to talk about current technologies which are being used in developed countries and uh, being introduced in developing countries, they help us in getting to the diagnosis as quickly as possible so that treatment can be started. Next time we're going to talk about how do we treat if the patient goes into hypovolemic shock and first of all we treat these uh, water depletions, we treat these uh, electrolyte imbalances and afterwards when we've treated these uh, two basic uh, uh, pathological consequences which happen in this disease then we're going to go into this antibiotic use. Then we're going to talk about which antibiotics we're going to use and uh, at the end we're going to talk about what ORS contains. We'll talk about what ORS is, when to give the ORS, when not to give the ORS and why does potassium supplement has to be added inside the ORS even if the ORS contains potassium already. Next time we're going to tell the patient after giving the antibiotics, after telling the patient what to do, we're going to tell him how to prevent this disease from ever happening. We're going to tell them different preventive modes that person can adapt so that that person can avoid this kind of infection, this kind of pathology. Next time we're going to talk about that all of these vibrios are not going to cause the same pathology. It totally depends upon the organism that how it manifests in your body and what system does it affect. Many of them cause only sepsis, many of them only cause cellulitis and yes, most of them all, most of them do cause gastroenteritis but not all of them. So we're going to talk about what organisms cause what kind of pathology in our body. So that's all for today. So watching for watching this complete video and a variety of lectures, there are thousands of lectures which vary from anatomy, physiology, pathology to medicine, surgery, ENT, eyes. So you can go on to sky.com. There's a free trial for you available so that you get accommodated with it. So for watching this complete lecture and the variety of lectures, please subscribe to sky.com. Thank you for watching.